the best part of the race is just getting out on the trail with the dogs and enjoying the scenery and the silence of the wilderness. Watching them perform is always awesome, you know, they're just doing what they love and, and killing it most of the time, so that just is really exciting to be a part of. About halfway through the race, when you're tired and the dogs are maybe tired, that's where you have to really be mentally tough and look at the dogs in front of you and worry about your own team and nobody else. The worst part is the hills. The best part is also the hills. I hate them both, I love them both. We're always dealing with the elements, especially where New England throws it right at you. <laughs> Extremes. <laughs> And you know, you're asking yourself, I'm doing this for fun, right? The Can Am's known to be a unique race. It's the largest sled dog race east of the Mississippi River. Uh, this will be our 30th running of the Can-Am. What makes Can-Am special is the love of the mushers, actually, and the love of the canine athletes. These mushers come year after year, and they're family to us. And the whole community just loves seeing those faces return year after year. It's a community family. You know, all the valley participates in it, and uh, I just can't can't say enough how the people respond to the Can-Am. We actually have three races on this weekend. The 100 sled dog races, which will start Saturday morning, run to the town of Allagash. Mushers have a four-hour layover there. Then they run back to Fort Kent, so they arrive here at the finish line late Saturday evening. And the 30 mile races leave Saturday morning. They run a 30 mile loop. Um, they leave at 10 in the morning and they'll be finishing here at the ski slope at about uh, noon time. The bigger of the races is the Can-Am 250. It's a 250 mile race. Runs south of Fort Kent for 72 miles, then heads west into the Allagash region. Ends up in the town of Allagash, usually on Sunday evenings. Safety checkpoints along the way. And then they're back in Fort Kent on Monday or Tuesday. As you see in the map here, the total area of 250 is vast. You're going through a big area. And, and so you need dogs and mushers that knows what they're doing uh, and they got to listen to their their dogs and uh, they got to love them and take care of them. This is my first time competing in the Can-Am Crown and as soon as I knew I wasn't running the Iditarod this year, I was like, all right, finally, I'm, I'm going over there and trying that one out, so I'm excited to be here. I grew up in Kinnick, Alaska, the sled dog capital of Alaska. I started running the Iditarod for my, my rookie year in 09, and then I've ran it every year since 2012. My best finishes were two fourth place finishes in 2016 and then last year. What it takes when you go in there is determination and, and, and grit to get it done, you know. And my philosophy, I guess, going into a race, I have to have faith that I train my dogs right, that I, that I did things right leading up to those races, and then I have to have faith that my dog team's one of the best dog teams on the trail. So if someone's, you know, if my dog team's going slow, then everybody's dog team is going slow. It's the conditions of the trail, and if we're going fast, everybody's going fast. So, you know, winning a race just comes down to a few minutes. The reputation is it's a, it's a tough race, and a race like this, I think you have to be mentally tough, uh, more so than a lot of other races. 
That's what I really like about this race in general is the main goal is to get the musher across the finish line. You know, if you're slow, it doesn't matter. You know, you just you gotta finish. When we come in, I wanna see the dogs wagging their tails. I wanna see that they're eating their snacks. I wanna see the public being like, wow, this girl likes this stuff. She's passionate. It's like, oh yeah. When I was 17, 18, doing the race for the first time, was not really in it for competing. I was more so in it just to finish it. That was kind of the beginning of the, oh, I don't want to say the addiction or whatever. I, I really don't know who to blame it on because I've had dogs forever. It's all about dog care. It's all about caring for other people on the trail, you know, because there's some kind of crazy weather that's happened, you know, during the races. From start to portage, first checkpoint. It was really warm. The sun was very hot, and that makes things interesting for the dogs. And then we have this rain that keeps coming down on us, and they're announcing more from what I heard about tonight. I don't want to ask more that they can give me, so we're just taking things very easy and making it nice runs all the time. I have a philosophy and a belief that the energy that you put out rubs off on your dogs and I'm very conscious of that and so I, I always try and keep that in mind when I'm with my dogs, especially during a race where I know that their attitude uh, and their performance are directly connected and the better mood I am in and the happier I am in, the better they do. When we're setting up the race team, we'll put the leaders up front. Those are the smartest dogs. They take commands G for right, Ha for left. They drive the pace of the team and, and keep the motivation going. As we get towards the back, those dogs back there are kind of the blockheads. They, they just love to go forward. They're, they're always so much energy and excitement and slamming the line. And, and they usually put in a lot of work and hard pulling. Just before the start, they're kind of like, Oh, how far are we going? Are we doing a thousand miles or 40? <laughs> and, uh, but then, you know, you get them hooked up and they don't care. They're so amped to run and they just take off like a bullet out of the start chute, you know. And I think they really enjoy this, the excitement of everyone being around and seeing all the people and all the other dogs and stuff. It's, it's a really, really big, amped up, uh, crazy mess for sure. <laughs> My dogs are Alaskan Huskies and ranging in age from about two and a half years old to six and a half, seven. Most of them are related, so they get along pretty well. I've got some very happy dogs and friendly dogs and that makes uh, racing a lot better. Keep them happy and eating and healthy. If the dogs are happy and having fun, then I'm usually happy and having fun. If my dogs could talk, they'd look at me and say, why don't you lose another 20 pounds and make life a little easier? Our ultimate goal is to make sure that the dogs are happy and healthy throughout the race. I have a team this year, a total of 16 veterinarians. Is he drinking too? I think so. Okay. I'm just worried he's a little dehydrated. Pre-race checks, we're looking to make sure the dogs are in good body condition, make sure that they're able to maintain that throughout the race. She's just tired. And then throughout the race, we're there for support, making sure that any dog that maybe comes up injured, which, which happens, you know, not feeling well for whatever reason, we're there for medical support. We have four checkpoints, Portage, Rocky Brook, Silver, and Allagash. At the first three, we're there mainly for support. There are no mandatory checks, though very often the mushers want us to go through and look everyone over at each checkpoint. If there are any injuries, any illness, we're there to take care of the dogs until the handlers can take them over again. My goal is to keep them healthy. I love animals, that's why I'm here. More often than not in my day to day, I see these high active working dogs not doing what they're bred to do, not doing what they love to do, and they're anxious. 
they're overweight, they're not living their best life. These dogs are living their best life. It's what they're meant to do and and it's what they it's that they want to do, which is the most important part. They want to do this. These are some of the happiest dogs that I see and I I see dogs every day <laughs> in my career. So we can tell you what we see in a physical yeah. exam, but this is, you know, this is the musher's judgment, right? Yeah. On how well you know that dog and uh, whether you think he's going to warm out of it or you're going to get some period down the trail and then you got to carry him. If they were to have a problem and the dog couldn't continue, they would carry the dog to the next, you know, spot where they would have assistance and they could drop that dog from the race so that we would take uh, care of it at that point. Um, but, you know, in consultation with the musher, we make those decisions together and make the best decision for the dog. The community comes out for the Can-Am Crown. It's actually the whole St. John River Valley and a lot of Aroostook County. We have well over 400 volunteers. Year after year, they come back. If someone retires, their kids usually pick up where their dad or mom left off and the kids get involved. So it's, uh, it's quite an event for, for the northern half of the state of Maine. The whole state actually benefits from us running the Can-Am in the winter months. Our checkpoints are manned by volunteers. Um, many of the checkpoints, the volunteers have been there well over 10 or 15 years. They're experienced in what they do. They take pride in their checkpoints. The sponsors are like the lifeblood of the race. And without their dollars funding the Can-Am, this just wouldn't happen. It's all local sponsors. Of course, you have the Irving Woodlands, which is a major sponsor of the 250 race. The Irving Woodlands Corporation owns most of the forest land that we run our trails through. They go out of their way for the Can-Am. Even though they are the major sponsors, they also contribute in other ways. They love the community, they love the northern half of the state of Maine, and they're more than willing to open up their property for us to, to ride snowmobiles and run sled dogs. It's such a community of everybody comes. Politicians, and doctors, and truckers, loggers. A lot of people know everybody. It's, it's local, it's fun. We're excited to make sure Rooster County particularly is uh, really successful. We also have Phyllis Jow Bear Camps, and we have Native Dog Food and Pepsi Bottling Company also sponsor the race. We just can't thank them enough. Hand still over to Allagash. That leg was the hardest by far. It was strictly the conditions, just the torrential pouring for 80% of a run into the night and then freezing immediately. That was a long run. Dogs wanted more and I was ready to run and they were too. I'm very happy to win the race again this year. Lots of rain and it's tough here. I wish I could run all the legs during the day just to be out here running in the mountains. It's really fun. It's great about the first leg is you get to see all the scenery. Love Fort Kent and what they host here in the community. It's a great dog race. I like the trails and I like the country that we're driving our dogs. It's one of the reasons why I come back to Fort Kent as much as I can. I've got a lot of friends out here, a lot of people I know. It's a great community and they take great care of the mushers. And it's also fun to see mushers from the eastern part of the country that are out here. The volunteers, the vets, everybody, competitors as well, they're all just uppity and it's like for as little sleep as we get out there, it's kind of still a cheerful event. <laughs>